Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Sauce number 416IT uh, is what this is. This is a Sauce template used for routing their uh, 416 hinge, and here's what that template looks like. Okay, A very uh, low-tech piece of equipment um, in the sense that, you know, it's a piece of poplar. I'm pretty sure it's poplar. Doesn't weigh very much, about eight tenths of a pound. Um, but what, where it has substantial simplicity, it also has substantial beauty, in the sense that all the work's been done for you. You don't have to really think about making a mistake, because it's awfully hard to do that with this, in my opinion. Um, there is a cardinal rule when it comes to sauce that you cannot violate. If you do, your door won't operate. And that's simply the dimension of the door that you cannot exceed when routing the door in the edge of the door style. Um, and what that means is you have a, um, I believe it's called an E dimension. And the E dimension is uh, defined by the dimension from the face of the door on the pull side to where the mortise starts for the hinge. It's like hinge back set, except that would be measured from the push side. Um, but having, in fact, too small of a hinge back set would render the door not capable of getting open, at least most likely, to where you want it to open. So if you don't violate what is called the E dimension from the template, you'll have no trouble with sauce uh, because of where these spacing pins fall. You, When you get that onto your door, it doesn't allow you to push that template in too far where you'll violate that E dimension maximum, which is maybe a quarter inch on this. We'll look at the template um, to know for sure what that is. But it's a really great uh, piece of equipment um, when installing a hinge. And I find that people will, uh, quite frankly, people will shy away from sauce because they're too complicated. There's too much voodoo and black magic happening. Not really. They're easy. <laughs> um, they're not as easy as a butt hinge because you have to do two steps when you route it. But other than that, they're, they're, they're ideal. They're elegant because they're concealed. You don't see them. In my opinion, they're really good looking as well, and they can handle a substantial amount of weight. And regarding people shying away from the product line, that's unfortunate because, um, because of how capable that it is. It's certainly going to be more expensive than a butt hinge, uh, but when you get into doors that are taller, wider, heavier, or if you're looking to conceal you know, hardware, sauce is a great option. If it's single acting, sauce very likely is, a, is going to be a tremendous option. Uh, there are other people who make invisible hinges or concealed hinges that offer three-way adjustability. Sauce has said they're never going to make that type of hinge. Um, and their logic is there's no need in the marketplace for it. I think the people that use those, and I've, I've reviewed them from McKinney, from Tectus, from Sugatsuni. There might be someone else, but I've done extensive review of all of those. Um, they do give you a small amount of movement over the door when it's in the opening. Generally, when I've spoken to people about those three-way or 3D adjustable hinges, they've said, you know what, I'm going to be off a little bit. I want to be able to, um, and, my, you know, and, and from my perspective, being someone who has machined literally thousands of wood doors, measure twice and cut once, and you're going to be right on target because there's nothing to a sauce hinge that can't be understood. And when you add the template to it, you don't really even have to think about where you place the hinge inside of the thickness of the door. You just have to decide vertically where it's going to go. It will do the rest, and it's a really inexpensive item. I'll tell you, my only regret about these templates is that sauce doesn't make a substantially more robust version, meaning give me a $200 kit of these. Well, the, kit, the regular kit might be that much money, Give me a $500 kit that's made of steel, that's completely going to be tolerant of putting it down, getting it knocked around, you know, um, giving it rough, you know, sort of shop use. I'd like to have something really substantial. I don't like how the um, concept of this is going to be nailed to the edge of the door sooner or later, and to the jam for that matter. Sooner or later, something will wear out. I would like something to be clamped down to the door so that it's 
really not reliant on just a nail being uh, pushed down through it. That would be my only um, regret about the sauce templates. In my opinion, if you've never done a sauce project with a router, probably order the template. Um, you're going to need a template no matter what. Uh, you either were going to make one yourself or because you can't freehand it. Well, you, I suppose you could use spade bits and drill lots of holes down and then chisel it all out and do that sort of thing. You could. It's not going to be really elegant. You want a router to be doing all that work because you need a nice flat bottom for your hinge to sit on, the plate part to sit on, so that it's completely exactly where it needs to be. If you're doing a new project, have your door manufacturer route for the material. They likely have CNC equipment that they've done this before and it will come out perfect. Um, but if you're doing a project and they want sauce hinges, I would not shy away from the project just because it's sauce. And I'm going to hope to dispel any sort of concern that you might have. So this template is for the 416 hinge, about 16 inch length, about 3 inch wide, about 5 eighths thick. Okay. The other features on here is it will have the stop pins. It will have this little doodad here and here. And what you can do, I can't rotate that down. I'd have to loosen that screw a little bit. That's meant so that when you put this on your door, you can hook it to the top. Okay, So that if you want to be able to hook that to the top of the door, it will give you this center line. If you want to take that same mounting point and transfer it to the frame, Fold that over just like it is now and then butt that up to the underside of the header and it will give you automatically the margin that you need between the top of the door and the uh, underside of the header. Then simply make your center to center preparations the same on both door and frame. That's pretty easy. Um, it has these uh, guide pins or these stop pins that are here. They're just drywall screws really because the sauce hinge requires two preps. It requires what I call the body prep and then the plate prep. The body prep is down in here, and then the plate prep is just here. So if I were to mortise for this, I would leave the guide pins in, I would nail it down, and I would do my deep preparation first, and then I would reset my router, uh, remove my pins, and then route that plate to the depth necessary. You're done. The sauce installation instructions, which are linked to down below, will tell you to do the plate first. I like to do the deep stuff first that's concealed just in case I get a little too cavalier and pull my router out and it will nick part of my door preparation. Um, I want to be able to do the plate prep and clean that up. Now that's very rarely happened to me because I don't play cavalier um, when I'm routing stuff and I've got a, you know, the routers I would use would be very light horsepower routers, one horsepower kind of stuff. But when you're doing a plunge router, now you're two, three horsepower. It's a lot of, it's a lot of tool because you've got a really long bit that sucker stays in place when I turn it off until it's done. Okay, until it's done. And um, if I were to suggest one single improvement to sauce over this, I would like to have a center line struck somewhere on the edge of the template. You know, maybe just a, a, a grooved mill. You know, just a just a milled, you know, easy groove, or maybe a groove and then a piece of something, you know, malleted into it. Because I want to be able to take my tape measure. Get it on the top of the door and make sure it's hooked actually on the top of the door and not on the rivet. I've done that. I did that once in 30 years, and I says, "Why in the world am I off a half an inch? What happened?" And I realized I had hooked it like that, and I didn't double check. Um, anyway, which was the first and only time I didn't double, didn't measure twice and cut once. Um, I want to be able to get that tape measure. Mark, you know, uh, how would I do that? Pull it down. I would mark my holes. And I want to just line that up to the center line, okay? That's all I want to do. I don't want to think about measuring this. I want to line it up to the center line. Um, and that's what I would want sauce to improve on um, because that will just make life easier. Because I know how these templates get used. Put your tape measure down, get it down, mark your center lines, get your template, put it on, nail it, mark it up to the center line. Great, stop. If you've got three of these, nail them all. Come back and do your router all at once. Do all preparations at one time. So let's understand why this prep is the way it is. Let's dispel any further mystery about that dimension E that can't be violated. Before we move on, you will get two nails, and that's going to be for these holes that are here and here that will allow you to nail this on to the door. OK? 
okay? Don't nail it all the way down. There would be no reason to do that. Nail it to the point where it doesn't rock and that you can place your router on it and don't tip your router. Just push the router on it and just move it laterally. You just don't want the template to move at all. The further you sink that down, the harder it's going to be to pull it out. Um, I, you know, I would like some sort of a better method. Look at Porter Cable's templates, um, and we're going to talk about Porter Cable when it comes for comes to butt hinges. Sauce could be able would be able, I think, to improve the design a little bit by using the Porter Cable system because these nails you can whack down and then you can easily pull them off um, off the edge of the door. Uh, the installation instructions are included, which I had uh, said earlier, are linked to down below this video. We're going to go over them briefly because the installation instructions are for the RGB 100, pardon me, the RGB 100 entire template. This is not the entire template, just a template. And we're going to look at the template for the 416. So let's switch to the screen view now and take a closer look at all of that. This is the item that we are indeed looking at. Generic image from the factory here. Sauce Invisible hinges can now be installed easier and faster than ever before, and safer, I would argue. Each router guide template is individually handcrafted for exactness. The template is held on the door and jammed with nails. Guide pins locate the deep mortise. The edges of the template assure a perfect outline when used with the Sauce RGB 100 template guide and lock nut or the Porter cable 42024 guide along with its 42237 lock nut. Okay, we'll talk about all of that stuff in a moment. A factory original uh, video here demonstrating it. There is a link to the template uh, instructions, to the instructions for this template. Um, let's hop over to the, let's look at the 416 sauce template first, the template for the actual hinge. And I'm looking at a sauce uh, 416 hinge, and we have our template. And I had said earlier the dimension is the E dimension. They refer to the E dimension here. And that is indeed a quarter inch. Now the E dimension is literally the edge of the door to where that prep starts. Now in your mind's eye, if you were to exceed a quarter inch, you can start to begin to think, oh yes, that would complicate things because you're going to take the D dimension and make it smaller. You cannot have too small of a D dimension, and you cannot have too great of an E dimension, conversely. So that template for the 416 gives us an ability to look at it a little bit easier, I think. A lot of dimensions here, but don't get nervous about it. E dimension. A quarter inch, I was right. If exceeded, the door may not open. This dimension right here, from the prep to the edge. Okay. Do not exceed that. If you do, you're going to be, of course, creating an, a situation where the space between the door and frame is incompatible for the door to swing. Um, to illustrate that a little bit further, let's look at another document that will even illustrate that, that cardinal rule even better. Clearance detail. That's going to allow you to see how the door behaves depending on what you're doing. Um, so you could easily treat um, you know, this as a standard door because it has material applied to it. Just you know, forget the fact that there's clearly something applied there. Think of this as a solid door uh, and uh, this dimension does not exceed quarter inch. You can see how it will work out just splendidly. Okay, Standard door. But if you get into a situation where you start to have trouble with um, violating that principle as you could understand here. You can see how it won't go you know, it'll go to 90 degree in this instance uh, but it won't go anything beyond that and it's really illustrated by this sort of concept here. You make this too small and you're not going to be able to open the door and that's just the bottom line. So we're going to move on from frightening you about you know, the dimension E um, you can't mess it up, so to speak, with this template, and that's just how that's going to be. Okay. Um, on the 416 hinge, I don't really see anything else 
uh, that's important. Hinge location, you might take a look at. It gives you an outline of where to apply hinges. Uh, you know, here in North, or at least the United States, we're, we're accustomed to top, middle, and bottom. Well, when you leave the United States, you're going to see two at the top and one at the bottom. And if you've ever been on a cruise boat, you might say to yourself, oh, they put those hinges in a weird location. Well, they put it in a European location because where was that built, That boat probably built? Probably somewhere in Europe. Um, and that's just why it's like that. Um, it is a better standard to put two hinges up at the top because, in fact, it's about um, where all, well, actually 70% of the weight of the door is held by that top hinge. Okay. So, you know, biasing hinges towards the top is a good idea. My only concern is that you will, you might want to check with your door manufacturer to make sure that that sort of installation won't violate a warranty on the door, um, just to be sure. So that's a nice guideline there. Now the installation instructions, back to the template page, the installation instructions are here. And as I had said earlier, we're going to not go over all four pages because that's been done elsewhere by me in a different video. Page one, I, I would certainly recommend that you review this just to know more about the entire template. And be mindful, this 416 IT is not the same template that you would get with the entire kit because this U-channel needs to fit over the edge of the, tip of the uh, template, so they actually route that so that it's actually flush here, okay? So if you're replacing a template in your kit, be mindful that you're gonna want one that's been made specifically for it. Plus the, re the remainder of the document gives you an idea of other information that you'll need to know. So let's get to page one. Now, another thing that's really important, I had a client call me one time and wonder why something didn't work right when he had bought all the parts from us and his preparation that he was getting was too small. Um, and it's because of this. He, he had the template, had the hinges, bought the guide, the, lock, the guide with the lock nut, and the router bit. And he was finding that his hinges were fitting too tight in the preparation. Well, turns out that something was wrong in the math uh, from the manufacturer. So you need to use the right guide along with the proper diameter uh, router bit because the size that has been created in the template itself is based on the dimension of your guide and your router bit. Your guide is, is kind of shown here, that's the lock nut, but it's the guide that the router bit goes through. So then the diameter of the bit also matters. So the, the, all three things have to conspire to be accurate to give you a correct finished size. The size of this prep, the diameter of the guide in the router base, and then the diameter of the router bit itself. So they're saying, you've got to use this size because that's how we've made the template. Okay, And I'll show, well, actually I can just show it to you now. 42024, 42237. Let's go over here. Uh, let's see. Oops. All right. So this will show you a little bit more what we're talking about. The diameter of this. And this will fit literally into your base of your router. Um, then there's going to be a table that will tell you the diameter of the bit that you need. Let's move on. Safety. You can read that for yourself. I would... Eyes, ears, and mouth protection, lung protection. This shows you basically how to attach it to the top of the door. Okay, this would be the pull side here. Um, this cross section here refers to, this is what the prep will look like. You first need to drill a hole down into the door so that you can fit your router bit into and start creating your preparation. Um, so you'll drill that. When we get the second page, is what I'm driving at, has important information on it because it tells us for the 416, your router bit's going to be half inch diameter, four and a half inch long. 
Um, you can use the 51310 by a mana, and we have that in the site as well. There it is. That would give you the proper size for that preparation. Okay. They really go out of their way to make sure that you can't really get it wrong. Then, you know, all you really need to do is drill a hole down into the door as shown here to make sure you can fit your router bit into it and then start doing your preparation. Now, when you go through the installation instructions and talk about how to prep this, they're going to tell you remove the guide pins, do the plate prep first, put the guide pins in, and then route the deeper part. So they're going to say do this and then do this. As I had said earlier, I would do it in reverse order. I always have. Um, and it works for me. Now, let's go back to the template because I want to illustrate a little bit clearer what I'm talking about. So you have a plate prep here. Just this is what I'm calling the plate. You, you have a body prep here. So you're going to prep the body, which will be this 2 and 39 60 fourths long. The depth is going to be 1 and 15 30 seconds deep. Okay. Once that's done, you're then going to do 4 and 5 eighths overall length. It's going to be 1 inch wide. It's going to be 15 30 seconds of an inch deep. Now your preparation for the hinge is done. The only thing left to do is to pre-drill the holes for the screws. It's just that simple. And looking at this template allows us to better understand what exactly it is that we're drilling or prepping. Okay? Your body prep is here. Your plate prep is here. Super simple. Okay. You can go through the rest of the installation instructions, which you'd want to do, but I've given you the summary of it. Um, inch and a half deep is that mortise prep, not the 1 and 29 64s or whatever it said. Uh, 1 and 15 30 seconds. Yeah, so it's, it's you know, it's 1 and 16 30 seconds would be your depth. They're measuring the body itself. You don't have to worry about this. You don't have to worry about this, nor this. You just have to be mindful of the depth. That's all. And most specifically, the depth of the plate. Okay, if you're a little deep on the body, it doesn't matter, just as long as you're not shallow. But if it's fire rated, as a 416 is very likely a fire rated hinge, right? Um, you're not going to want to over prep that whatsoever. All right, let's now take a look at the link here to the manufacturer's page on our site. Fire up the full product catalog. And let's just do a find function for the 42237, which was the lock nut. That part number stuck in my head because I wanted to immediately get to the, pro to the proper page where we'll find this material. Okay. Your hinge model, your router bit size, your template that you'll use showing it being used, you will notice they didn't nail that all the way in at all. If it's nailed in at all, which it may not be, that might just be for show. Um, like I said, don't nail it in all the way unless you need to. That's what the entire kit looks like. These are the part numbers for the entire kit. Three or four piece, depending on if you're doing doors that require four locations. Accessories, your router bits here themselves. We talked about the 51310 being the bit for that. Then the bushing. Guide bushing ID, OD. That three quarter is the magic number. Okay, and that's it. Now the 416, you can find that hinge in here yourself. Indeed, that's a fire rated product. So I don't know, you know, they're obviously prepping the door. Uh, the frame, you know, the frame may or may not be fire rated. Um, you know, what they're, what they're putting it into or what the application is. Up to three hour, in fact, with a 416 hinge. 
So this catalog is handy because it will allow you to see everything sauce related. And I had said earlier about how elegant they are because they can handle a lot of weight. Well, they've got this Hercules style hinge, which is positively um, rambunctious in the in terms of the weight that it'll hold. You know, if you've got a three foot door, you can you can definitely get with enough sauce hinges. You're going to hang a thousand pound door. And there is, well, I was about to say there are no butt hinges that will do that. That's not exactly true. But as it was said by someone at Sauce once upon a time, I don't care how heavy the door is, keep throwing Sauce hinges at it. And you can see the logic here. This is called the nomograph, by the way. This is how Sauce tells you, based on the width and weight, how many hinges to use on their nomograph. So important of a document that on this page I actually even have their nomograph listed there. Okay. Let's wrap up this video on camera. Okay, in conclusion, a very simple piece of equipment, but I'll tell you, for what they charge for it, you know, you're going to need a router most likely to do your prep. You know, to make your own, yeah, you can definitely make your own. I've made lots of templates. Um, if I've done a preparation over and over again, I will stop and make a perfect template, and then I'll hang it on my wall, and I'll always be ready to go. Um, but the fact that the factory is making these so inexpensively, I probably would just, I wouldn't say treat these as disposable, but... I would invest the money even if you're doing it one time only and likely never again. People over at Sauce are a pretty good group of folks, uh, fairly responsive. Uh, they usually have material in stock. There are times, of course, when they don't. That can be a little bit of a pinch point uh, when it comes to lead time. Um, you know, I can't think of anything in particular. It seems to kind of go like this a little bit. Um, but the hinge is so elegant that I would recommend that you simply, you know, plan ahead. Make sure the hinges are available when you need them. Um, in closing, I'll relate one story. I had a client walk in about six months ago, and I've been selling sauce hinges for 30 years in my family for decades. The client walked in and said, yeah, I got a broken sauce hinge I have to replace. I says, broken? I've never heard of such a thing. Sauce hinges never break. In fact, we've hung a 16-gauge hollow metal door with three-quarter inch laminate applied to the face of the door. Okay. Uh, so they'll hold some weight. And I says, well, what happened? Was someone doing chin-ups on the door? Turns out this undersized sauce hinge, which might have been a 208, was used to hang a bookcase, and the two children climbed up and sat on top of the bookcase, and the hinge literally deformed like this. The only time I ever saw a sauce hinge not operating correctly. So it was way past what it was supposed to have held. Um, so they've got a perfect batting... Uh, you know, uh, batting average in my opinion. If you have any questions on the 416 IT template or any other sauce product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.